What's up, guys? Cameron Foos here with FoosLoist.com. Today is Monday, October 24th. Just going to take a look at the trades from the today. Made about uh, 2000 bucks. Uh, it was a little bit of a hectic morning, uh, really just starting out with UNIS, U-N-I-S. This thing had uh, quite a massive run, and we tried to trade the over-under short at $3 per share here, and this thing just kind of toyed with us uh, throughout the rest of the session. Uh, but we'll take a little bit closer look at what happened here this morning. Some kind of news came out, uh, and this thing just ripped, absolutely ripped. And what we look for on stocks like this is this is basically a parabolic move. A parabolic move is a stock that makes just a steady run to the upside with no real pullbacks. Uh, and that's what you see here on Eunice. This is the one minute intraday chart. Uh, and what we look for on these stocks is basically kind of a break in the trend. As always, we use the 13 EMA as kind of an indication of where the short term trend is. No matter what time frame you're looking at, you can use the 13 EMA. Over here on the right side, this is the daily chart. I use the 13 EMA. Over on the left side, this is the one minute chart. I use the 13 EMA. So it doesn't matter which time frame you're looking at, whatever time frame you desire to use, you can use the 13 EMA to kind of indicate what the trend is for that time frame. So you can see here on the intraday chart here, Eunice was just basically riding the 13 EMA. It's the, the yellow uh, trend line here uh, on this chart. So what we look for in over under short is a stock. Hold on, we got, uh, I got my phobian being delivered here. All right, resuming back here, sorry, the for the pause there, but what we're looking for is a stock that makes a parabolic move into a whole number resistance. We call this an over under short, basically going over a whole number and then coming back down. Uh, basically, it's like a stock just kind of reaching above that whole number uh, and it just kind of gets, you know, exhausted and then comes back down. So that's what we try to look for to short into. Typically, when I try to look for an over under short, I'd like to get short about you know 15 cents to 30 cents above that whole number it's not always that easy uh you know that would have been a much better decision today on unis but a lot of times you get a little antsy and you kind of get fomo it's like okay maybe this is just only peaking up here at three so this is what happened here me and mike both got short on uh unis i was actually trying to locate my shares when this was just breaking out over here and i was on live chat with speech like hey these shares are not in my account yet. Please add them so I can short this stock. So we had just seen, you know, a move from 250, although up to 390 or th over three within uh, after that broke highs a day here within, you know, 10 minutes. So it was just already having a huge move. So that could have easily been the peak here at three dollars per share to go short and see a pullback, you know, from three uh, potentially down to the 13 EMA, 72, 75. That's a 25 cent move. You know, if you have shares, you can make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. So it did get a slight pullback here uh and then it hit the 13 ema and continued to bounce uh so i was looking for a little bit more of a washout so i continued to hold my shares from about 297 from here this thing spiked up once uh over highs a day right here came back down to 13 ema and then spiked up one last time and i got stopped out you know i was just like shit you know sometimes because you get a little too early i was short at 297 uh, on this stock rather than, you know, typically I do like to get short on the over under short between about 15 cents to 30 cents above that whole number. So I was a little bit early, which can definitely screw up your, uh, your average, uh, uh, entry and get you into a much bigger losing position. If I was in at $3 or 297 up at 325, which is actually in the better range where I'd like to enter, uh, I'm already at a pretty hefty losing position of, you know, 25 cents. So it's not, uh, a good way to start out that trade if you're in early, but you never know uh, with these stocks. It's all just, you know, kind of intuition and managing the risk. But uh, so I did stop out of there on uh, UNIS for about 700 bucks, uh, $700 loss. So that's never a fun way to start out the session with a big losing trade like that when you're kind of just like, shit, you know, I was, it was Monday, I'm ready to make some money and you start out with a losing trade. It's definitely a damper uh, on your mood and your confidence to continue trade forward. But, you know, I know a stock like this, a huge move, there's going to be a pullback at some point. It's still had yet to break down the 13 EMA. So I got reshort uh, at 310 here. I believe it was 5,000 or 3,000 shares again at 310. Uh, and we got a nice pullback here on UNIS finally back under three bucks. 
broke the 13 EMA, broke the VWAP, and I actually covered right here at about 294. If we zoom in here, uh, we are broke down the 13 EMA right up here about 309, right where I entered at 310. Came back down, broke the VWAP, and then from here, I was hoping to cover into the 270s, and I actually covered right here at about 294 as it just had a barely spiked back above the, the VWAP here on pretty heavy volume. So I was like, all right, I don't want to see this thing spike back up to 310 real quick and give up you know, all my uh, profits here. But then quickly right after that, just had a fake out and then had a huge selling pressure and drop down. Uh, which I did drop into my 270 range just briefly, whereas I was trying to uh, cover that. But I basically um, made up for my entire loss there of 780 bucks on that trade right there for UNIS. And then I actually traded this again long right here at about 324 we entered. This is an F2 breakout. An F2 breakout is basically just a high of day breakout that happens between... Uh, I forget what time frame I put in uh, the DVDs, 8.30 to about 11.30. So it's basically just the middle session. F1 is the opening breakout for whatever breakouts that occur on the daily intraday chart for the first two hours. F2 is the middle. F3 is the end of day. So F2s are never nearly as reliable as an F1 or F3 because kind of middle of session, there's a lot of indecision or what could happen throughout this trades. But if you look at the chart here, and UNES did have a lot of momentum here. Uh, this was back above the 13 EMA. It was back to potentially breaking out highs a day. So I was watching this right here thinking, all right, we're back retesting highs a day. We're riding the 13 EMA again. Maybe I'll just go in for some shares to see if we can all of a sudden potentially get a $4 magnet uh, on this trade uh, or this stock just because there was a lot of momentum. But I just decided to scalp. It got up uh, barely and then it's kind of flagged here i scalped out for 250 bucks so not a huge trade but still 250 bucks not a bad day uh for a lot of people to make that and i just made it in a very short amount of time and then this came back down and really didn't do much the rest of the session it's back at 309 so that was kind of the morning trade on unis this thing <laughs> wasn't a very fun way to start the day because it was so difficult uh <laughs> to get in and out of this thing it was just very choppy level two is a little bit harder to read uh, on UNIS, but there's a lot of volatility. Uh, as long as you're on the right side of these trades, you can make some money, but you can also get stopped out of these very quickly because they move quickly in both directions. Uh, next one was SUNY Q. So there's been a crap load of OTC stocks on the move lately, which is uh, uh, quite interesting. Uh, OTC markets have been dead for years, so it's really kind of interesting to see these things uh, back in action. 2005 through about 2007, that's all I traded was OTC stocks because there was stocks left and right that were just doubling, tripling, quadrupling, and there was volume. They were liquid. You could trade them, um, and that was just much bigger part of the game of trading, and now... Uh, all of a sudden, just this last week or two, uh, these oil stocks, uh, the weed stocks have all been making moves. Uh, so Sun Edison, Sun Q, uh, was one that had been making a huge rip here this morning. This actually had a hot F1 breakout twice this morning. If we zoom back in here. Uh, this broke at F1 this morning at about 24 cents and all ripped all the way up to about 35. So a huge move on suny q and then actually had a uh, descending triangle breakdown here that occurred and i got short me and mike both got short this uh, about 31 to 32 cents and this thing is uh, just totally broke down you know a stock like this these little crap penny stocks you see a move from 10 cents to 35 cents there's going to be a pullback and a lot of profit taken so there's definitely advantage or money to be made on the short side so as soon as it's broke down here i got short 31 th or 30,000 shares at 31 cents this thing had a pretty steep decline i covered half uh, my share is 15,000 and then covered another 10,000 uh, i believe i have uh, just 5,000 shares left from uh, 31 cents so just for a little bit longer swing so i made about uh eight, 1800 bucks on suny here uh, with my open and closed profit. So I still think there's definitely potentially a lot of room to uh, pull back here. When you see stock have a parabolic move like this, there's always a point in which it comes back down to the 13 EMA. So there's a lot of room for this to pull back all the way down to the 13 EMA, which is currently at about 12 cents. So I definitely think uh, SUNY definitely has a lot of room to pull back. Another one is VNR. 
I'm short this at about 78 cents. It did have a little bit of a spike into the close. So I was up about 900 bucks just shortly into the close. Uh, but this is a little bit uh, difficult uh, stock to trade. The spread is thin. You can see this thing went from about 73 all the way up to 77 on my 20,000 shares. That basically just wiped out my entire $900 profit within, you know, not very much volume. So it's a little bit more risky of a stock to trade. But every time it's had some sort of spike lately, it's just been selling off. So that's what I got in here too short here this morning was this did have a spike all the way up to about 85 cents. I got in at about 78. I tried to get in at 80 right up here, but I did not have my shares located yet. So again, I had to contact speed trader, be like, yo, give me my shares. I want to get short this stock. So I didn't get in until about 70, 78 and a half is my average here. I got 20,000 shares of VNR. So I'm, Pretty much almost back to break even at, with this thing at 77. I, what if, if I'm in, I'm in at 78 and a half. So I'm hoping to see a continuation to the downside. This stock's a turd. I think it's going to continue dropping. Uh, but again, I always got to manage risk. If it starts going against me, you got to listen to the, the charts. Uh, no matter what your opinion is, you can't just let these things go against you and you just all of a sudden have a huge losing position. So that's what I got here for today, guys. VNR and SUNY. I'm still short both of these, so we'll see what we got shaken into tomorrow. Anyways, guys, that's it for today.